Hey, good morning. Opening day is here. How about that? I'll be down at uh, the Chop House with Tyler and Scott. Noon to three today. Looking forward to that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, We have the abs to talk about, the nuggets to talk about. Um, Yes, even the Rockies to talk about. And D-Max Mac here with About Last Night is where I talk with you about whatever's on your mind. Um, But we lead off with the Broncos. This is all presented by Ed Prey, the real estate, the number one trusted team in real estate in Colorado. Looks like June... Rates may be going down a little bit. That could help you out. Um, I locked in at 6.5%. And you know what? It's 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 not what it was a few years ago. But it's better. And I sold a home this week. Finally closed and closed on buying a home. Two things this week. Big week in our lives. And couldn't do it without Ed Prather and his team. Dom and Abby, and Ashley, and Andrea. I had the three A's. Um, And we had a team of other people that were helping us along the way. So, listen, man. uh, When I say that they're the best, this is coming from getting our house ready to sell, putting it on the market, and we got a couple of offers in three days. Had 10 showings, three offers, And one of the offers um, came to completion at the price that we were asking for. And then in terms of flexibility, we actually made a bid on a home and it didn't work out. It had nothing to do with Ed's and and his team. Um, Crazy that that fell through. Uh, And that's a wild story. We can get into it maybe later, but. You know, when that just didn't work out and we thought that's uh, that's it. We went to see a place three times. We were like, this is it. This is where we're going. And it's um, it, it kind of fell apart. We looked for a place the next day, the next day. And we found it, which was incredibly lucky. And this we didn't mess around with um, and we got it. And I, I actually can't believe that we were lucky enough to get it. But we did. Thank you to Ed Prather and his team, edprather.com, who's sponsoring our watch party for the national championship game. And this is a celebration at Avid Caddy for everything so far. We've worked so hard for this channel. We're celebrating and we're watching the national championship game. And Monday is going to be a big, big, big night. Um, for us, and I would love it if you could join us. Oh, my God, that would be incredible. Avid Caddy is at 9556 Park Meadows Drive. Uh, Free golf, free food, local lobster. The lobster truck will be there. Um, Journey Spice Company will have some finger food for you. They're a great people, my guy, and and, um, Red Rocks Beer Garden providing a couple of kegs, back at liquors with some liquors. It's going to be a hell of a night with prizes from the PGA uh, PGA Tour Superstore. Um, I mean, it's it's outrageous how much cool stuff is going on, and we need you to be there with your friends, your family. Please come support us. Hang out. Come in. Hang out as long as you want. We'll be broadcasting live. Chad will be there. Nate will be there. David Bruton will be there. And hopefully you will be there. Sign up at avidcaddy.com slash DMAC. That would be amazing. Okay. About last night. Um, We're getting closer and closer when it comes to the Broncos. Dialing in on Bo Nix. And Bo Nix was with RG3. So we get to hear Bo Nix talk a little bit. And... Uh, let's let's hear what they have to say. Bo Nix with RG3 on his podcast. Guys. How cool would it be for you to play for the Denver Broncos and Sean Payton? That'd be a blast playing for a coach like that who's been 
so important for the game, so important for the offensive game. He's known a lot for what he and Drew Brees did together. It was quick game, get the ball out, timing stuff that I love to do. That's what we did so great here at, at Oregon. It's an extension of the run game. Sometimes people think throwing is just throwing it 100 yards down the field and see what happens. The comparison between you and Breeze just comes from what you were able to do your last two years at Oregon. And your tape is really clean. Fundamentals are clean. Making the right decisions are clean. And that's what Drew was known for. You work hard enough and maybe those comparisons start to see some parallels truly in the league. I would implore Sean Payton drastically with everything in me to bring Drew Brees in for you so you could spend a couple months with him. Okay. Um, cool. I mean, you, you're hearing good things about their interactions. Could Bo Nix be Drew Brees? Listen, it's kind of a simple question, isn't it? If you think he can be Drew Brees, draft him. Simple as that. Don't think about it. Go. That's who you had the most success with. It's a good comparable. If that is the way it is, go for it. Meanwhile, this is interesting. Spencer Rattler was on with Kay Adams talking about the Broncos. Which, which team did you ha have to prepare for the most? Um, like you said earlier, uh, it's probably Denver, you know, with, with their QB quiz and what they did for the install. Um, it was a pretty pretty cool thing, but definitely had to study study up on that, uh, but did a great job with that. What does a quiz entail? Like questions about like your favorite color or like w questions about like really detailed stuff? Just offensive stuff, just quarterback stuff, really breaking down their offense, formation, stuff like that. He's a maniac, that Sean Payton. A maniac. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> okay. Now, Spencer Rattler certainly wouldn't go in the first round. Uh, you just know how I feel about guys drafting the second and third round. I'm just so not for it. You got to trust Sean Payton on this. You, you got to trust when you hear about how these guys interview with the Broncos and what the Broncos are putting these guys through. You have not heard that in the past. You're not going to get a Paxton Lynch. There is no way Paxton Lynch could pass or a player like Paxton Lynch could pass the evaluation process the Broncos are putting these guys through. There's no way. <clears throat> I'll say this. Based on how Sean Payton is doing things, it seems impossible to me that you would get somebody that wouldn't suit him. And that's the most important thing. So, oh, DMAC, you would take anybody. More and more and more, I'm impressed what I hear about their process. And it's not like I would take anybody. But right now at this point, it feels like I would take anybody that Sean Payton would trust. And they're not going to draft a quarterback that Sean Payton doesn't trust. So, so I'm fine, I, I guess, with basically anybody that passes the muster of Sean Payton because you have committed to Sean Payton, so fine. So I guess I would take anybody that Sean Payton trusts. It just would kill me this year if Sean Payton doesn't trust somebody to draft in the first round. It would kill me. About last night, when it comes to your Denver Nuggets. Well, first of all, this is fun. Here's uh, Michael Malone getting thrown out of the 102-100 loss to the Clippers. Reed faced and blocking at Josh Timmon. He thought that Michael Porter Jr. got fouled on that three-point attempt he's by uh, Zubat. That's technical number two, and he's out. Two quick ones. There was no way he was walking off that. Okay. Michael Porter Jr., it's like, is it a foul? Is it not a foul? It's that leg kick out thing, and uh, they're furious about it. Michael Porter Jr. did not have a great shooting night, that's for sure. 
Malone got bounced. We'll go into the details of the game. But why don't we have Michael Malone after the game uh, explain why they lost? Run. And then, obviously, I mean, if you wanted to look at why we lost tonight, obviously you could look at the free throws. They shot, I think, 85. We shot 68. Uh, so we left a lot of points at the free throw line. Uh, but that thir- uh, second quarter, as you mentioned, scored 33 points that quarter, shot 50 from the field. Um, you just got to you know, really look at that film because it seems like this happening a little bit too often right now. Uh, those non-Nicola minutes, how can we survive those? And it's hard when Jamal's not here because usually he's out there. But um, you know, that was a really big, big stretch of the game. Uh, but could be, couldn't be more proud of the group for staying with it, fighting through, and giving ourselves a chance down the stretch. And um, obviously a couple of... A couple of calls, a couple of um, shots go in and out, a missed free throw here, missed free throw there, and uh, just came up a little bit short. Yeah, uh, free throw percentage was terrible. Nicole Jokic was amazing. And it feels like uh, a bit of a wasted opportunity. They're better than the Clippers. They, the Clippers didn't have Kawhi Leonard. Okay, the Nuggets didn't have Jamal Murray. You had a 17-point lead, and then the bench is... The bench did not score a point in the first half. They didn't score a point. The bench scoring overall was nine points, but I hesitate even on giving them credit for nine because Christian Brown played 34 minutes where Reggie Jackson played 22. Both had seven points. But they decided to close with Christian, not Reggie. So, oh, okay, Reggie's. But Christian got starter minutes and closed the game. Reggie was a minus 14. Christian Brown was plus 7. That, that wasn't great. Wasn't great. DeAndre Jordan was minus 10 in 5 minutes. So that means Aaron Gordon, you're playing the 5. And, you know, that's okay. Not great. The non-starter minutes... God, I hope they just don't kill the Nuggets in the playoffs. I hope they don't. And it it does indicate that likely the Nuggets, if they are to win a championship, and they should, they've got the best starting five, and they've got the MVP. They should win the championship. They should. But if they don't, or if it's a, a much harder struggle you could fairly look at the bench and say, well, why didn't you do something at the trade deadline? Why, why were you so convinced that this bench unit was the answer? Look at all the changes the Avs made. Now, listen, if it plays out and they win a championship, okay, cool. You know, that's the bottom line. But when you do absolutely nothing, nothing, you don't even try anything. I mean, even last year, the you know the Nuggets brought in Reggie Jackson and Thomas Bryant. Didn't really need either of them. But whatever, you tried something. You tried to make the bench better. Not freaking out over a loss. You're still, what, 16 and 5, I think? Since the All-Star break, there's six games to go. We always said we thought you'd have a great shot if you're 20 and 7. They could go 3 and 3. 16. How's my math? Not great, I guess. I guess you'd have to go. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. All right. 4 and 2. Got Atlanta. They're a sort of a borderline playoff team coming in on Saturday. At Utah, home against Minnesota, at Memphis, at San Antonio. It's it's not a killer schedule. This might have been the toughest game left on the schedule, frankly. And and if you could have shot free throws, you'd probably win this game. And Michael Porter Jr. was off too. 
He was 2 of 10 from 3, 14 points, 6 of 18 on the night. And Jokic was a monster. 36, 17, and 10. Another triple-double after a 42-point night. The MVP, that's locked up. But I'll tell you this. You're just not going to win a championship without Jamal Murray, okay? You're just not. And the Avalanche aren't going to win a championship without Val Nichushkin. They're not. Some things are very simple truths. So whatever's going on with Jamal, um, um, knocking on all sorts of wood, he's missed, what, seven games now? That's a lot. That's a lot. But he did travel with the team, which indicates to me he's working on things, they're training. It's, it indicates to me that, well, I'm, I'm being optimistic, but you can't win without him. Meanwhile, about last night, when it comes to your avalanche, much better news to report in Minnesota. The avalanche virtually ended uh, the Wilds' season. They bounced back. Yusis Anunen gets the W. Georgiev will start tonight. Tonight, five to go. Game is at seven o'clock. If you don't know about Edmonton, you think, oh, it's a, so far away. It's in the mountain time zone. It is just straight. You just get on a plane at DIA and you travel straight north. You land in Edmonton eventually. It's really not that far away. And um, you've got a crazy, crazy race going on with, um, like, the scoring leaders. Nathan McKinnon with 130 points. Ty with Kucherov at 130 points. Oh, Kucherov has 133. Sorry, he got... Golly, man. These guys are going nuts. And Kucherov has a game in hand. Wow. So both players had three points last night. Crazy, right? <clears throat> uh, McKinnon has to get to 140 to break the overall organization record. Plenty of time to do that. Not plenty of time, but enough. To the game itself, Jared Bednar um, talks about the rivalry and how used this did. The, the, they're a big rivalry of ours, so I think, you know, there's some hatred between the fans for sure, so I think our guys understand that, and um, we're able um, to do a nice job against them this year, which is good. We'll take it. What do you think of Eustis? I thought he had a slow start. I didn't like the first goal. Didn't love the, the second goal, even though it was power play at the end of it. He got looking the wrong way and crouching down. But then from that point on, I thought he was exceptional. You gave up the one power play goal with this. Okay. Yeah, they went. Uh, no goalie controversy, though. No, 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 no. Nothing to see here. I'm sure Georgiev will play incredible tonight, get the win. Do what he, I mean, he's had, well, he got pulled out of one game. Then they had a couple of days off. Then he didn't play last night. Should be fresh as a daisy. Right? Nothing to see here. Except everything to see here. We'll watch it tonight against the Oilers. Nice game, though, last night. Miko gets his 40th goal which is terrific. Empty netter, but so what? He earned it. McKinnon's got three points, trying to keep up with Kucherov, who's playing unbelievable. They they give out the trophy, the Art Ross. just That's a good one. That's just Who scores the most points? You get a trophy. Meanwhile, the heart for the MVP. I think it's going to be McKinnon. But you can't deny the season McDavid and Kucherov are both having to. So here we go, sports fans. The Nuggets are avalanche with 76 games played. So does Vancouver. So does Dallas. Dallas has 105 points, three points ahead of Vancouver and Colorado. Golly, man. What a freaking battle. What a battle. And you look at the schedule. And Dallas is ah, it's gonna be a monster game, yo. That is gonna be bananas. And that's happening on Sunday at eight o'clock, a late game. So you've got 
Edmonton coming up. This is an amazing schedule. <laughs> Edmonton, Dallas, Minnesota, Vegas, Edmonton. Wow. Wow. I mean, nothing but bangers for the Avalanche the rest of the season. Woo! Are you kidding me? I mean, that is a way more dynamic schedule than the Nuggets have. Just saying, man. Damn. Damn, son. Friday night at Edmonton. Tonight at Edmonton. Sunday, 8 o'clock. Golly, late start time. But that game against Dallas is gargantuan. But only if you beat, you got to beat Edmonton. Or at least get a point. Home against Dallas. Tuesday, home against Minnesota. And Saturday, home against Winnipeg. I mean, wow. Just wow, wow, wow. Exciting. Exciting, exciting, exciting. So, here you go with the avalanche. But, hey, we'll take the win. Duran playing great, too. Couple goals and assists. He is doing fantastic. He's zeroing in on his career high for points. Miko is over 100 points. McKinnon is having of a Hall of Fame career. He's having his best season. I mean, it's wild, and you really don't know what to expect in goal. We are going to be out at Avid Caddy on Monday night for a watch long for the championship game, but it's more just a party in general. Thanks to our friends at Gorilla Sports who are going to help us on the production end of things. All presented by Ed Prather. Find them at edprather.com. Register for the event at advocati.com slash DMAC. Tons of prizes. Um, so much fun. Monday night. So I'll be doing Hangout Live from 4.30 to 5.30. Take a little bit of a break. And then we open the doors at six and probably um, start the broadcast around seven o'clock and be live from seven to 10. So looking forward to it. Should be a blast. Okay. Time for DMAX Mac. Let's see what's on your mind this morning. A reminder, we'll be on at 9 a.m. with uh, Nate and Chad talking all about the Broncos and quarterbacks in the NFL. Let's see what you got to say this fine morning. Opening day. Open I'm, this. You know, I don't have a lot of Rockies gear. Brent, good morning. Good morning to you, Brent. This is like the best that I got. I was looking around for Rocky stuff. I have a shocking little amount of Rockies gear. <coughs> Congrats, T Mac. Appreciate it. We'll be riding on my loaner bike that I got from um, Trek Bicycle Boulder, and we'll see what more permanent things we can do. <clears throat> but but going to ride the bike to opening day. However, um, I have a way to ensure that that bike is at no chance of being stolen. I'm not going to lock it up outside. And But I will say, at Coors Field, they do have a bike valet. They do. They've, they've got a place, and it's near where we're broadcasting from. That you can lock it up. You can. And it's a great service, so I'm grateful for it. Uh, let's see. Chad, good to see you this morning, DMAC. Chad, it is always good to be seen. Man, I wish I still lived in Denver so I could go. Oh, I'm sorry you can't. Monday night, Chad's there. Nate's there. David Bruton's there. Got some free cocktails, drinks, food. Uh, the games are on. Long drive competition. Free golf. Free this, free that, free everything. Free. Free. You just have to show up. But it's free. No door charge. No nothing. Just free. We'll give away prizes. We're going to have a blast. Avidcaddy.com slash DMAC. Uh, walking into traffic at the Broncos trade down in round one and Trey, um, draft Rattler in round two. I just question the level of commitment, but then again, to be fair, 
if all that happens, it's because of Sean Payton. Uh, good morning, DMAC. Have a great weekend. Go Hawks. We got a hell of a weekend at Ball Arena. The, the Nuggets against the Hawks and then the the abs against the stars. So, and we'll, we'll, we'll be there for all of it as always. So we'll look forward to covering it. And in hype for Monday, my man. And I know you're going to be there. I'm pumped, 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 pumped. Chuckling, um, watching D-Max struggling. If he's okay with Denver trading back and picking up Rattler in round two. Yeah. Yeah. You know how to mess with my head. I'm with you on trusting Peyton. And Peyton, we trust. Slim Shawnee, our guy. Roxanne, good morning to you. Appreciate it. Good to see you, Roxanne. If it was George Peyton, as in the past, we would have signed Carson Wentz. Then we trade down in round one, pick up a cornerback. George Payton. Yeah. It'd be something like that. You're, you're not wrong, Brent. Thank God. That's not happening. Do you have any uh, T idea maybe on who Sean Payton's top two or three quarterbacks are for the draft? Well, they're having everybody in to interview him. They've talked to them all, so it's a little difficult to get it. But like Penix was in town, they'll have Knicks and McCarthy. They've spent a lot of time with um, Rattler. They put through the, the, and even that kid from Tulane, they've talked with um, hard to say. I, I will say this about what Sean Payton has done. There is a secrecy paranoia over in that building. And you do not hear the chit chat that once existed when Elway, when Elway was running things. Good morning to you, John. It's great to see you, pal. Lately, Nuggets lost to the Wolves without Cat, twice to the Suns, two points short to the Mavs, and today the Clippers. All top teams in the West. All by the thinnest of margins aside from that Minnesota game. Hey, listen, it's not going to be easy, as easy this year. Nuggets went 16-4 and four last year. It ain't going to look like that. It's not. It's just not. And I just want to say how exciting is these. See how much KUWT has grown since day one post. Yeah, man. Go back and look at day one. Remember when you didn't even know what the name of this was going to be? That is that is right. We actually, for one day, called it something different. Um, congratulations, DMAC. Thank you, Andy. And that is so nice of you. I appreciate it. That is awesome. You know what's cool? If you want to track the history of this channel or what we've been doing, you can do it. Day one, unemployed. What am I going to do now? Day one, unemployed. What am I going to do now? And I, I, my phone in front of me, and I started talking, and I uploaded it to YouTube. I documented everything on Twitter, and and it it makes me excited to think if we can grow from what that was to what is basically happening on Monday with multiple sponsors and running commercials on 92.5. What could this be in a year? What could it be next week? What could it be in a month? What could it be in a year? And it's, it's nothing without you. That's for sure. It was it's, if it's if you're not involved with it, it's nothing. It's it's me just just talking to the wind. We're close to six thousand subscribers, and it'd be great um, if you get the word out and subscribe. And listen, supporting ninety two five and everything we do there. So today we're out at um at the Chop House. Please, please, please stop by there. That's going to be a huge party that I'm pumped that I'm part of. Pumped, beyond pumped, that um, we're broadcasting for the Chop House. Again, for me, again. Trust me, that has some deep significance to me. And I'm so excited that we're there. I'm pretty excited basically about everything these days. So, all right. Organization did nothing. Um, this is the Nuggets. The trading players after the championship is what frustrates the fans the most. All right. Coach left him in too long. 
Uh, I'm not sure what you're talking about. Don't know. Uh, Nuggets will go as far as Brown, Jackson, and Watson can take them this this postseason. If they can't get into that short rotation, it could be a quick exit. Well, Jeff Green, Christian Brown, and Bruce Brown were incredibly important last year. They were. They were. You're not wrong. Sean Payton. Payton only falls one quarterback on Twitter. J.J. McCarthy. Wow. That's some good snooping right there, Jacob. Really? My man, Jacob. I'll give you a high five on that one. Oh, that's interesting. Ed Prater. Yes. Lobster rolls. We will have lobster rolls at the party. PhD show rules 92.5 is number one. John, my man. I know, I know the song. I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. I promise you, John. I promise you. Thank you, John. Yeah, I love the radio show. It's just so fantastic, isn't it? It's great. Uh, Guten Morgen. Guten Morgen to you. Guten Morgen to everybody. And uh, thank you to Ed Prather, edprather.com. He'll sell your home guaranteed. He'll treat you just <coughs> like they treated me. I promise you. I didn't get special treatment. I just got treated extraordinary the way you will get treated in buying and selling a home. They'll get it done for you. I couldn't be happier. Couldn't be more satisfied. I can't do an endorsement like that if it's not true. Can't lie about selling and buying a house. So thank you to Ed Prather. And you should check him out at edprather.com. You should sign up for the watch long at Avid Caddy. Avidcaddy.com slash DMAC. It's going to be amazing on Monday night. Love it. Thank you to our great friends at Trek Bicycle Boulder. Having my bike stolen was traumatic, that's for sure. Having friends like Chris and everybody at Trek Bicycle Boulder is so rewarding. And um, yeah, I am so looking forward to getting that loaner bike, but it's, it's, it's a beauty. <clears throat> I'm going to, you know, give it a ride this morning um, to the Rockies game where, trust me, I have a way that that sucker is going to be fine. I don't want to tell anybody, but it's going to be good. So I'm pumped for that. Pumped for everything, man. Pumped for opening day for the Rockies, and we'll be out at the Chop House. Tyler, Scott, I think Scott's traveling, but Tyler and I will be broadcasting from noon to three. We love the chaotic mess that is opening day and coverage with Kill You With Truth about the Rockies as well. It's great, man. It's a great day to be a Denver sports fan. I appreciate you watching. About last night, mixed bag in terms of wins and losses, but opening day, hope springs out.